If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Thank you. Please, Dan. I also have signed up to speak Daryl Perry. Thank you. For the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC. And I'm going to attempt to answer some of the several questions that have been brought up. Uh, I believe it was Representative Silver had asked the question about uh, algorithms not necessarily working correctly the first time. And the bill specifies that on page two, line two, a redistricting plan generated by the algorithm shall be forwarded to the speaker, etc. <coughs> it doesn't say the first redistricting plan. It doesn't say only one redistricting plan. So in theory, they could run the program 15 times. Here are 15 options. You get to choose which one you want. And that would still, you know, a redistricting plan has been forwarded, uh, but there would be multiple options. Uh, questions about could the uh, algorithm be manipulated and it could be, and it would wind up violating section three of uh, what would be new RSA 662-B colon two that specifies in establishing the districts, no use shall be made of the following data. Address of the incumbent, political affiliation of voters, previous election results, or demographic information other than population counts except as required by the Constitution and laws of the United States. Now to answer, and unfortunately, Representative Sousa, who has brought this up, is not in the room, uh, there have been court rulings specifically applying to other states that say that you need to have a majority-minority district. Uh, generally, that applies to southern states. So Alabama, there's a very gerrymandered district that is majority black. And that's to make sure that there's at least some minority representation in Congress from the state of Alabama. So I think that's what this is referencing, but I would have to ask the sponsor to clarify if I'm understanding, understanding his intentions correctly. Uh, there was also a question, I believe, from Representative Gay about do softwares exist on this? There are actually several. And I sent you guys all, and gals all an email early this morning, probably 1230, with a link to bdistricting.com, where, where the maps that I passed out came from there, uh, where the guy actually provides links to other sources that have attempted to read draw some districts. For purposes of the record, that that site and link is listed on the first page of the handout given on behalf of Open Democracy. And there are other things other than what he does, uh, one of them being something called split line redistricting, which is not something that I would recommend <coughs> New Hampshire do, just because New Hampshire requires that the towns and wards be all uh, contained. And split line will just go through the middle of towns without regard for that. But it is something that exists. Uh, and one of the previous speakers mentioned something about free open source software. And there's actually a difference between freeware and open source software and free open source software. Uh, the maps that I provided came from a site where the guy does have his code available that could be reviewed, and there was a question about who can review that. Uh, lines 30 and 31 on page one, as well as line one on page two, specify the computer algorithm shall be reviewed by representatives of all parties as defined in RSA 652 11, which currently would be Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians. Also, other interested individuals, meaning that anybody could wind up saying, I want to see this code. And they could then make sure that the algorithms being used are fair and do not include the addresses of incumbents, the political affiliation of voters, the previous election results, or other demographic information except as required. And I think that we need something like this 
tremendously because I'm not going to say that the current system allows representatives to choose their voters, but it makes no sense to me that we have one state house district with 11 representatives covering multiple wards and then other places where there's one state rep, no floatoral district, and the state rep represents 3,200 people. So why do we have one state rep, or actually a group of 11 state reps, representing 38,000 people, roughly, and other state reps representing 3,200? So we need something like this to ensure that there are more smaller districts. If that means creating more wards in cities and towns, I think that would be a good thing as well, and I'll attempt to answer any questions from the committee. <laughs> questions from committee members for Mr. Perry. I'm seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I also have signed up to speak on House Bill 459, Daryl Perry. Thank you again. For the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC. And in addition to uh, what was brought before you, uh, or brought to you by Attorney Jason Nett, my objection to this is on line 24, something that appears to have been snuck in that would require challenged voters to be residents of New Hampshire, whereas every other voter in the state is only required to be an inhabitant with a domicile. Uh, <laughs> HB 459 thus would most likely be found to be unconstitutional because other attempts to insert the word residency into voter registration forms have been thrown out by courts consistently. And this actually addresses a question that Representative Bennett brought up about could this wind up discouraging college students from voting? And if a college student is not a resident of New Hampshire but domiciled herein, they would either be disenfranchised completely or would be committing a Class A misdemeanor uh, punishable by up to a year in prison and possibly a fine of $5,000. So there are uh, you know, those objections as well. That is my primary objection in addition to the this already duplicates info that's on the voter registration form. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Two members of the committee have any questions for the speaker? I'm seeing none. Thank you for your testimony. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.